Hello my friends and welcome back to All The Mods 9. Now this episode is going to be colony focused. We're going to do some TLC around the colony, make sure things are up to speed. I've done a bit of decoration here and there and as you can see in my, uh, in my house we have a whole bunch of these chipped workbenches where we can make some really cool looking materials. We'll cover that a little bit later as well as the colony but we're going to start with some time lapse builds of the guard towers and while we're doing that I'll talk about what we're doing in this episode. Now, Ambriel is so quick at building these guard towers that basically, yeah, she'd almost finished building this before I'd set the camera up and we don't even need to time lapse this. She is just storming through. Level one guard towers, very quick to make. So we're focusing on the colony this episode. And what does that mean? Well, it means getting jobs for all the guards in the guard towers. It means fitting them out with the best gear they can have. Hiring new dudes to fill in for the guards that we have. We're also going to need to build housing for the extra roles we want to have. And I'm thinking we might build a few buildings this episode. I'd really like to build a mine for one. A fisherman's hut would also be really cool if we can get that close enough to the coast. And something we also need to consider is a university. Now it looks like your advice was spot on regarding the Paxel. She will use the stone paxel to clear out dirt, stone, and wood as an axe, a shovel, and a pickaxe. Okay, so we're back in game and we have four fresh guard towers. Now, colony hiring is set to manual, which means I get to choose each of my hires myself. So number one, we have Jensen Callistus already in this guard tower. Great. Okay, let's head over to the next one. So when you start mine colonies, you get four fresh, brand new colonists to come and join your colony. And if any of those die, they do get replaced. But beyond those initial four, you're on your own. You have to either have colonists be birthed, as in, you know, when a man and a woman love each other very much, they get together and make a colonist. Um, but yeah, we're going to need some houses for that to happen. And that's why houses is on our to-do list. Take a look. So basically we've got guards, boom, that's what we're doing right now, hire new guards. Number two, tool these mother truckers up. We're going to get them some armor and some weaponry so they can defend and do their jobs. Number three, houses, question mark. Why the question mark? That's because we're going to look at houses, see what they have to offer and see how many we can realistically build because they could be very expensive. Number four is a mine and they called it a mine. We're going to build a mine because I think mines are cool. Number five, a fisherman's hut. We're going to see if we can build that on the coast because it's quite far away. And number six is the level two builder, the final piece of the puzzle. So here we are over at the guard tower, manage workers, and looks like there's only one person for the job. It's Vita Festa. Now there's three types of guards. There's knights who are, as you can imagine, close quarters, archers who are ranged, and druids who, uh, they just basically buff your dudes. And you don't really want that many druids because they don't do that much. But early game, we're going to focus on knights. Because I love all of you guys, Patreon members and YouTube members, but there's no way I'm going to trust you with a bow anywhere near me unless I want an arrow in the knee. So there we go. Vita Festa has become a knight and the tavern has freed up a bed slot. And we're going to have to hire some new dudes from the tavern to fill these guard roles. So yeah, roll up my sleeves. Let's take a look and see who we've got to choose from. So we've got Rhapsody Muck Large Huge, and we have Jello 101. Okay. Now, as you know, colonists that come to us via the tavern have a cost, a price. We have to pay the toll. And sometimes it's more expensive than we want to bother with. This is 22 nether quartz. That's quite pricey, but doable. Oh my god, Jello, seven diamonds. I don't think so. There's also Mixed a Long Tit, <laughs> oh my god, having quite the sandwich here. Mixed a Long Tit, who, let's see how expensive you are. I can help you with that. 30 redstone. So it's often a better way to breed colonists because there's none of these prices. However, the stats on the guys that you find at the tavern are usually pretty cool. Like, check out these nuts. Wait, can we check him out? Is he even here? Is these nuts real? Weird. We can't use... Oh wait, is he already in the colony? I think he might already be in the colony. Either way, he's kind of bugged. 
He doesn't have like an icon above his head, so he's not a visitor. That means he's either just some random guy. He hasn't got our yellow name coloring either though. I think he's just a buggy dude who decided to hang around. Well, welcome to the colony, these nuts. So we're kind of out of options. I reckon we're gonna have to hire Mixter Longtit and Rhapsody McLarge Huge because unfortunately, Jello, you cost too much. Oh, well, look at this. Mixter Warboy1 is now happily living in Redwood Shores. Because we freed up that space in the tavern, looks like we've already had a child fill it up. Well, okay, we're gonna have to turn off children because we don't want people filling up our houses without our say-so. So I'm using the MC home command just to make things quicker this episode because I'm gonna be doing a lot of back and forth thing. So kids will be born is gonna be off. So calm your jets, cool your heels, no hanky panky until I say so. Now, what's this? We've made some changes in the workshop. That's right, I moved the computer upstairs so we can get to it easier. Also, this coal generator, I've put uh, a couple of botany hopper pots with spruce in here because we don't want a tree that can yield fruits. And basically the spruce grows, logs go down into the coal generator and we get power. And it's just enough for us to manage the computer system right now. This might change because computer systems can draw way more power later on. Anyway, where are the redstone at? We need 30 of this. Let's go hire a dude. There we go, Mixter Longtail has decided to stay in the colony. A new settler arrives in your colony, they bring word that barbarian spies have found the growing village. You might want to build guard towers. Oh, well, luckily enough, we got four guard towers, but it sounds like, yeah, we're going to have to defend ourselves before long. So, Mixter, you're going to be in this guard tower. Your guard tower is, is pretty important. You overlook the sea. So, basically, if we have any assaults by sea, you're going to be the Paul Revere of our... Redwood Shores. Ivana Caldonia, here we go. Right, so how cheap are you? Cakes. Can we make cakes? Uh, we, we could, but I think I'm just gonna use Nether Quartz and get Old McLarge Huge as our final guard. Was it 40? Maybe. We'll take 43 just in case I was wrong. Oh, there you are. Followed me up here, did you? Oh, 22. Even cheaper. Your citizens urge you to build a warehouse. Well, we've already got one, Chief. Anyway, Rhapsody McLarge Huge, let's get you in the final guard tower. So a quick look at the build tool shows us that this is, you know, it, it's kind of made our colony bigger. We're not gonna see a massive impact until we start leveling up these guard towers. So getting our builders hut to level two, definitely gonna be a good thing. Where is she? There you go, boom. Oh my God, yeah, wow, looking very commanding, like a musketeer. So because we hired Rhapsody from the tavern, she has upgraded stats. Yeah, take a look. Dexterity 14, Mana 14, 17, Focus and Creativity 19, Intelligence. And she's a smart one. So sometimes getting colonists from the tavern can be a smart move because they'll have really good stats. Anyway, now that the guards are in position, we can scratch that off the list. Boom, guards. And you guessed it, it's time to tool these mother truckers up. So one of the cool things I've been thinking about is basically if we can use Silent Gear tools with our builder, why can't we use Silent Gear weapons with our weapon dudes? I mean, it stands to reason, right? Now they only use wooden weapons, unlike the builder who can use stone tools at level one, guards only use wood. So we're looking for four swords for our brand new knights. Now here's a puzzle. If I put the wooden sword in the crafting bench, oh, it does, it becomes a wooden silent gear sword. This is great because what this means is we can upgrade and soup up these swords and also upgrade them with better materials and keep their traits and tips and things as they get higher level from one, two, three, four, whatever. So what kind of cool things can we do to soup up these swords? Now we don't want to enchant them because I think using enchanted swords is uh, behind the tech tree upgrade at the university. So we're just going to focus on silent gear upgrades for now. And there we go. Now we're going to need a few of these. It kind of makes me realize maybe we should be, uh, you know, using blueprints rather than uh, these template pattern boards, but that's a problem for later. And also we're going to use coat. Oh, okay. So I reckon we're going to skip coating for now. 
Uh, I do have quite a few emeralds, but I'm not going to waste diamonds on, especially on a template. Maybe on a blueprint I would, but not this. However, the grip, the grip we can do. We just need some wool. One brown wool? Do you know how many sheep I have outside? Well, it's time for shears. Finally, a use for our farm animals. Ooh. Dark clouds, though. Stormy day. Hello, my friends. Now, while we're here, actually, we're also going to do a bit of culling. Because I'm going to need some leather. Oh, my God. What the hell are you? Oh, no. Oh, it's a druid. Ooh. Okay, let's take him down. Also, why are there dudes? This is bad. We could get some colony deaths happening if we're not careful. I'm going to run inside the house and have a sleep. See if I can get rid of this thunderstorm. It looks like the druid's gone home. I guess, you know, when uh, when we slept, he left. Fine by me. Let's kill some cows and get some leather. Oh my god, so many of these beefs. Oh, what a lovely day. So if you've watched this far into the episode, I want you to let me know what is your favorite animal? Any animal in the world, what is your favorite one? When I think of my favorite animal, I kind of like bears. Bears are pretty cool. And if I had to pin one down, it's got to be a polar bear. They're just crazy. I love polar bears. But yeah, pop your favorite animal in the comment section and I will heart and like the comments. Now, of course, the thing we're going to use for tips is going to be iron. And uh, yeah, if we use two iron, we only need to use one upgrade template. So four tips. Now, I should have tested this once, but we'll give this a go anyway. Oh, yeah, look at this. An iron tip. And all this really does is give us one attack damage. But honestly, upgrading from four to five attack damage, pretty good. So we'll give all of these an iron tip. So there we go. Four grips. And what is the upgrade here? Ah, attack speed. So 1.6 up to 1.8. Great stuff. So likewise, much in the same way we upgraded the regular swords to silent gear swords, we can do the same thing with armor. And also, much like the swords, I reckon we can upgrade these too with some pretty cool stuff. Four linings. Let's line these boots. And what's the difference? So this has one armor, 65 durability. Goes up to, what, 1%? Knockback resistance? And Snow Walker, walk on powder snow without sinking. Oh man, that sucks. But you know what? We're going to do it anyway. Let's go tulip our dudes with their new shoes. Oh yeah. Mixed a long tip. Hello. So I'm going to give you some boots, put them on, and a sword. How's it going, Rapper? I can help you with that. Let me give you your boots and your shoes. Now, we're also going to give Rhapsody a shield. I'm not sure if she'll use it or not, but it's there if she wants to. I'm fairly sure, though, that shields are like an upgrade from the university. So next up, it's... Um, I don't remember, actually. Who's the guard over here? And the final guard. The man, the legend. Jensen Callistus. How's it going, friend? There's the boots. There's the sword. Now, can we get these guys to patrol? What is their behavior? So we can use like a like a this this obtain tool. We can give them a manual patrol, but we can also have them just patrol around. Yeah, it looks like they're just going to patrol and let him go do his thing. And is he putting on boots? Yeah. Oh, yeah. So these guys are actually going to wear the boots. Just takes them a while to get to it. So we've tooled up our dudes, we can strike that off the list. Boom. Tooled up. Houses. Right, so let's go over to our crafting bench and craft a house. So it's not called a house, it's called a residence. And we use wood, torches, and a build tool. No sweat. Now we are going to need a whole bunch of houses in the end. So I reckon nine is a reasonable number to make. They're also mega cheap, so that's totally fine by me. 
Anyway, we're just going to use this wide open space right here to demonstrate what a colonial house looks like. It's in fundamentals under residence and it looks like we get some amount of choice. So here we go. This is a bricks house levels one, two, whoa, three, four and five. That's a very cool looking house. And also looking at this, they definitely kind of link up to each other. So you can put all of these in a very cool little row. There's also a diorite house. This looks like it's exactly the same, but it uses diorite instead. And this kind of keeps in with the theme we have for the town hall. So that is also a choice. And last but not least, you have just a regular house. Now, this one actually looks pretty frickin' funky. And it's definitely much smaller than the other ones, so if we're hard up for space, this could be an option. Well, what kind of house do you want to do? I think we're going to go for diorite houses. We're going to start with level one, and we're going to plonk you... Where are we going to plonk you? You know what? I'm thinking maybe over here in this basin. This looks pretty cool. So I think what we'll do is we'll back them up against that wall over there, and yeah, that's where the first house is going to be. <clears throat> now it's always good to build buildings as if they're level 5 because you get to see what it's going to look like eventually. Even if we're going to start with level 1, it's good to see how it's going to grow. But yeah, level 1 and we can just basically link this up and have a nice little street of residential properties. Now we're not going to build this yet. It's in position and we can come back and build this, but we want to save our builders, uh, you know, time and effort because the builder's hut level 2 is the real important one this episode. As well as the mine. So we want to build a mine. I'm not quite sure where exactly we're going to build it, but I'm thinking we want it near to the warehouse because, you know, he's going to come back and forth and drop off stuff to the warehouse as he does his mining. So I reckon right here next to it could be a good shout. Let's go and have a sleep and make the mine block. Mine is also very simple, just wood, a wooden pickaxe, and a build tool. Or we can use a stone pickaxe and get two. So, fundamentals, mine. Let's see what this thing looks like. Not the smallest of builds, but from a mine, you wouldn't expect anything less. So what does it look like at level... Oh my god! Level 2, level 3, level 4, level 5. This is a really cool looking building! Oh man, and I think this is the perfect spot. I can just imagine redwood trees behind this and maybe a, la a layer down, we can have another one. Oh yeah, this is it. We are going to lower it though. I think we're going to lower it by one. And push it back. Boom. This is the perfect spot. Okay, well, let's pull the trigger on this. What are the materials required for this? Framed spruce planks, not a problem. We can use our cutter for that. Yeah, five andesite. Amazing, yeah, this is nothing too tricky. I'm going to get building this right away. I really want to get a miner hired before the end of the episode, so let's jump into another time lapse. I'm going to go gather the bits and I'll touch base with you in about, ooh, 20 minutes or so, I think is how long it'll take. Why is Ambriel going so slow? You want to go slow, my friend? Oh no! Sick! So again, we're going to need a hospital. Uh, that's something that you can't really do without. But for now, carrots and potatoes, we can kind of cure this manually. A potato and a carrot will give you two just because it might happen again and we don't want it to. You're going to cure yourself? I don't see any stink lines though. There we go. She's curing herself. So we're going to hook her up with the materials and let's check out the build. So the mine, and this is a real exciting build because while it's not exactly the best resource generation money can buy, it is 100% fire and forget. And also you never really know what your miner is going to find. For example, last series my miner hit a pocket of amethysts and filled my warehouse with all of that lovely crystal goodness. But also he dug a little bit too deep and exposed some evils that should never have seen the light of day. However, I feel like uh, we're not going to dig up anything nefarious this time. I mean, I hope not, right? I guess we'll have to wait and see. The long part of this build, as always, is the digging and preparing the area. 
and that's an example of where better tools are really going to soup up our builder's speed. However, when building a mine, the builder has to actually dig out a little bit more because he's got to dig the initial hole for the mine to go in. What you see on the surface of a mine building is only really half of what the actual building is. So I'm definitely keen to check out what this building looks like inside. So here we go, the finished build. Now, as you can see, all of these builds come with these weird section of cobblestone stairs. And I think this is because down the line, it kind of wants you to build a railroad uh, along the middle of the tracks. So maybe we can move the retaining wall and do that in future, because that might be pretty cool. But we're a long way off getting rails. Anyway, inside we go. So we have to choose who we're going to have as our miner. Oh, um, we don't really have many choices. Now, we could have made a quarry. But we're going to stick with the mine because we don't need stone. And actually, looking at his stats, Mixed Warboy is actually pretty great. So we're going to get him in the job. Oh, <laughs> whoa. What is with this outfit? What is that? A green jumpsuit? I mean, don't get me wrong. I love it. It's an amazing style. But it's not exactly what I'd imagine a miner to wear. It looks like a medieval gown. Anyway, what does she want? She'll need a tool, I'm sure. Wait, hang on a sec. Oh no, <laughs> no. It thinks it thinks he's still a child. Oh no, <laughs> oh, he's got the flu as well. Luckily we've gone around with uh, the carrots and potatoes, but it's a bit frustrating. A hospital is very high on our list of things we need to fix the colony, but let's see how she works. So the miner is a little bit tricky because as they're digging a mine, they want to kind of decorate and build the mine as they go. And that means they need the tools and blocks to do so. I don't think that's anything apart from logs, planks and cobble though, so we should be okay. Oh no, ladders. Okay, no worries, we can do that. Now we're gonna leave. <clears throat> now we're gonna leave her to do her thing and come back later to see how she progresses. But you got to be careful, right? Because in my old colony, I left it on for quite some time, and the miner created a huge, vast network of mining tunnels underneath my base. It was absolutely insane. It was like a labyrinth down there. It was crazy. You got lost all the time. So the last thing on our list of things to do, we're going to have to skip the fisherman's hut because this episode has gone on longer than I thought and a fisherman's hut can wait, but a level two builder cannot. We absolutely need this bad boy to be level two. But the question is, what do we require to get it there? So jungle wood, I'm glad I've got those saplings now because that is a requirement. Acacia wood, ooh, okay. and cobblestone shingles. So we've started to have to make shingles. But luckily it's not a huge amount of these. It's still a very small building. So everything is very achievable. But since we don't have acacia, we're gonna have to go and track down one of those saplings, one of those trees. So I think we're gonna wait with the builder set on level two, keep it at level one because we've got some other buildings to build anyway. Well, okay guys, a massive thank you for watching this episode of All The Mods 9. We got a lot of colony TLC done, our guards are good to go and ready to defend us against any raids that might happen. We also built our first mine and we have a house ready to be constructed. I'll do some decorating between this and next episode and then we'll come back and hit something a bit more exciting like, ooh, I don't know, maybe some create, maybe something else. If there's something you want specific, do let me know. But until next time, take care.